What's up everyone? This is Platinum Howler 14 bringing you guys another post-commentated Wi-Fi battle. This week we've got a triple battle against Ben aka Sethyas, same opponent from two weeks ago. Now I'd like to start by uh, apologizing for uh, sounding sick uh, because I am sick. Uh, you're just gonna have to deal with the fact that I'm sick unfortunately. Uh, so this was his, this was Ben's format choice. He chose triple battles, uh, so I had to throw some some random Pokemon together for my PC box because I do not have a triple battle team. And uh, this here is what I came up with. Uh, I mainly chose things that would be good against some of the Pokemon that Ben tends to bring, namely uh, Talonflame and Sylveon. Uh, as I have three Steel types on my team, uh, Jirachi, Jirachi uh, Klefki, and... Uh, and Polion to resist Brave Bird from Talonflame and Hyper Voice from uh, Sylveon. So one thing that's different about triple battles from all of the other battle formats is that the positioning of your Pokemon in uh, triple battles actually matters uh, because if you have like one Pokemon on one end of the of the field and another Pokemon on the other end of the, on the opposite end of the field, then those two Pokemon for the most part won't be able to touch each other. So you need to use that to your advantage in uh, positioning your Pokemon. And sometimes uh, the way the order in which you send out your Pokemon is actually comes down to luck, whether or not you'll be able to hit something that you want to hit. What makes this challenging is that he has a Talonflame on his team, and Talonflame spans Brave Bird. Uh, Brave Bird is a move that can hit Pokemon on the opposite side of the field in triple battles, so it doesn't care really about positioning offensively, um, only, only defensively, so that's going to be really hard to work around as I do not have any Pokemon that can hit Talonflame if it's on, if it's in a disadvantageous position for me. So, the Pokemon that I am going to uh, lead with to check Talonflame to begin with is going to be Gengar, and I have to hope and pray that uh, I can get Gengar in the right position to be actually be able to attack the Talonflame. And as we start the battle right now, you're going to see that I do in fact get Gengar in a position where it will be able to um, hopefully attack the Talonflame and knock it out uh, immediately. Uh, I also led with Jirachi and uh, Mega Sharpedo. Uh, my Jirachi's Choice Scarf so it can hit before everything else on the field and get into a position that it likes. Uh, my Sharpedo is going to go for Protect on the first turn so I can get my Speed Boost after the turn. Sylveon's also going to protect, um, potential, fe fearing a potential Iron Head for my Jirachi, as Talonflame's going to go straight for the Brave Bird on the Gengar, but I have not the Focus Sash, the Focus Band. Why do I have Focus Band? I have Focus Band because I was too lazy to dig up my Focus Sash on whatever Pokemon that it was on somewhere in my PC box. So, hey, I just put on a Focus Band instead, and I had a 10% chance of surviving that attack and I got that 10% and I'm able to take out the Talon Flame with the Sludge Bomb right afterwards. Um, as you saw, you also saw Jirachi U-turn out on the Tyranitar there. Um, I did not want to take out the Tyranitar there because I didn't want extra Excadrill coming in for free in that position because then he would have been able to uh, deal a, a lot of damage to my Sharpedo which is not what I wanted. Um, so I, I bring in my Clef Key to take that Earthquake, mainly because I do not want the Pokemon that I'm going to be able to uh, send in after Gengar goes down to Sandstorm. I don't want my Pangoro to take any damage because I need Pangoro to, able, to be able to threaten this Excadrill that comes in in the Talonflame slot. Um, because Excadrill is a big threat in the sand, it outspeeds everything and hits everything real, really, really hard because I have three Steel types on my team. So now that I've got my speed boost on my Sharpedo, I'm going to Mega Evolve. And he switches out his Tyranitar into my Lotic, um, 
potentially fearing a waterfall into that slot, but I, I do not waterfall into the Tyranitar because the threat in this case is Sylveon, and the threat needs to be swaggered because if this thing manages to get off a Hyper Voice, it will decimate everything on the field, so I cannot let this thing attack. So you see, Extra Drill is going to be able to go for a powerful Earthquake, knocking out Clef Key and bringing Pangoro really low. But he, the key is that he actually also... <coughs> excuse me. He also uh, um, damages his own Sylveon. And that's really important because I'm going to be able to take out the Extra Drill with a Drain Punch from Pangoro. And now it all comes down to Confusion Hacks, and I get Confusion Hacks of my own. Sweet revenge. How funny is that? Ben is always the guy hacking me to death with Confuse Ray. Um, and now I'm the one to hax him to death. Um, but he would not have gone down to Confusion there if he had not earthquaked his... If he had not earthquaked himself. So... That, that was a bit uh, questionable because Sylveon ha was a, a bigger threat, I would say, to my team because I was not able to take it down as easy. But two turns into the battle and Ben is down to his last three Pokemon, all in the field at one time. So I get to bring in, uh, I get to bring Jirachi back in for um, Clef Key that went down the turn previous, and. I get to go for an Ice Punch on the Garchomp, uh, uh, thinking that it will take it out in one hit, but because of the added bulk that it gets from Mega Evolving, it is able to survive the Ice Punch and then take out my Pangoro, and I, I think, I'm thinking that I've lost the game now because Garchomp survives and my Lotic's going to get a crit and a burn with the Scald, but that doesn't really matter because Tyranitar is going to be able to take me out on the next turn anyway, but what should have lost me the match right there, and I say should have um, for a reason, uh, is that I went for Protect on Sharpedo for seemingly no reason. I There was no reason for me at all to go for Protect on the Sharpedo, especially since I was not, Sharpedo was not attacked. If I had taken out the uh, Tyranitar right there, Jirachi would have still been alive and it would have been able to take out the Garchomp on the following turn with another Ice Punch. And then it just would have been Empoleon and Sharpedo versus Milotic, which was a battle that I should have been able to win. So, the reason why I say should have lost is because Garchomp right there, all Garchomp had to do was click Earthquake to knock out my Empoleon, and then Milotic would have been 1v1 against Sharpedo. And there's a good good chance that it would have been able to outlast outlast Sharpedo because um, of Sandstorm and um, a lot of access to recovery, and it could have got a uh, burn with Scald. But uh, my logic's definitely not going to be able to outlast uh, both Empoleon and Sharpedo when they're on the field together. So at this point, when he goes for a Dragon Claw into my Empoleon, and Empoleon's able to take out the Garchomp, it's just um, Empoleon is still on the field and able to get a Toxic off on the Milotic, and as soon as that happens, the game is basically over. Um, on this next turn, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of get a little cheeky here. Um, I mean, I can just click Crunch and basically end end the battle, but. Uh, I, I want to reveal my set to him. I want to let him know that I had this destiny bond in case uh, in case he had uh, anything that wanted to take out my Sharpedo. I was going to take it down with me. But uh, yeah, he can sit there and recover. That's fine. I mean, I mean, there, it's not going to help him. Uh, he can't he can't take out a Sharpedo and an Empoleon. I go for Flash Cannon with my Empoleon. The funny thing is, is that if this was competitive Milotic, which Judging by the damage that Sharpedo does with Crunch on the following turn, it definitely wasn't Marvel scale because I did, I did r about the same amount of damage with Crunch before when it this Milotic wasn't toxic. So I'm 
I'm assuming that this thing was competitive, and if I got a special defense drop with the flash cannon on the Milotic, then it might have been kind of interesting because Milotic special attack would have doubled, and it might have been able to scald, and um, scald would have been more powerful, and it could have maybe dealed with uh, Sharpedo at least, and then I don't know, maybe you would have been able to uh, wear down Napoleon, but. Highly unlikely, that's just a funny thing that could have happened. Only a 10% chance, I believe, for Flash Cannon to reduce the special defense. But let's talk about why I kept saying should have lost. Um, because obviously I won that battle. I should have lost that battle um, because uh, Ben threw that match on purpose. He, he lost it on purpose by going for Dragon Claw on Napoleon. Um, why did he throw it? Um, I I kind of know, but it's not something that I'm willing to talk about on uh, on this. Um, I mean, you never want like I would never want to lose a match on purpose. Like, even though I bring some of these ridiculous mons, um, I still I still play to win. Now, why did he decide to go for the Dragon Claw? Um, with the Garchomp into my Apollyon instead of just earthquaking it and knocking it out. Well, because he he threw the match. He lost it on purpose, and I am well aware of why he threw that match. Um, but it's not something that I'm going to explain to all of you. Um, you don't need to know why he threw the match. Just know that he threw the match, and that's kind of a crappy thing to do. But, uh, I mean, I'll take the win. It's my first win, um, it's my first win that I'm post-commentating, and it's my first win in a triple battle period, so that's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, but let's talk about uh, so some of the things that uh, went my way in that battle, as there was a lot of things. Na first, th th first and most important was the positioning of my Gengar. Um, I was going to put it on the end either way, um, but... Luckily, I chose the right end of the battlefield for it to be on. If I if it had been in the position that Sharpedo was, then Gengar would not have been able to touch the uh, Talonflame on the opposite side, and I would have been in a lot of trouble. And Talonflame would have been much more of a threat in that case. But, uh, I mean, I got lucky there. And that whole bit with uh, positioning... Uh, me getting an advantageous position with Gengar that that whole that whole thing kind of like snowballs throughout the match as I know that um, As I know that uh, Excadrill is going to be coming in on that slot and I can Bring a Pokemon in on uh, where in Gengar slot that's undamaged to deal appropriately with the Excadrill um, of course the 10% focus band survival was clutch um, as if I had just found the Focus Ash, I would have lived it guaranteed, and it wouldn't have been such a big thing. Um, and the third thing that uh, I was extremely uh, fortunate to get was the Confusion Hacks on the Sylveon, because if he was able to get a Hyper Voice off there, he would have knocked out both Pangoro and uh, Mega Sharpedo in, um, in one shot. So, very lucky there. I know I probably I might be getting some flack for um, using uh, Swagger to um, kind of you know help me win that battle, but uh, using Swagger slash Confusion in uh, in doubles or, or triples in this case triples is a lot different than using it in singles. I mean there is some viability there because. Admittedly, it is one of the best ways to cripple an Aegislash in doubles or triples because um, when it goes into uh, Blade Form and tries to attack, it has a sky high attack stat and a pitiful defense stat. If it gets hit twice in Confusion, it will basically two hit KO itself, which is really funny to see if it ends up working out. Please, no flack for the Confusion is the point because Confusion in triples is a lot different than confusion in singles anyway um so depending on the result of ben and i's next match i could be battling against zero in the championship the following week 
Uh, ben plays zero this week, and I play against Michael. So we'll be playing against Michael slash Overlord Kyra for the first time in my post-commentating career. We'll be having another single battle. So stay tuned for that next week, and uh, we'll see you guys then.